This week I took out all the money that I had in my stock brokerage account and I plan to invest it in NFTs and social tokens. I'm only leaving the money that I had in my IRA because of tax advantages there. But apart from that, I'm going all in on these crypto assets. And in this video, I wanna explain all the reasons why I think NFTs will be a better use of my money than stocks, as well as some of the drawbacks that I'm expecting with this new strategy. Just for some background, for those that are new here, I've been invested in the stock market for over a decade now. And it's been a place for me to put my money, but it's also been part of my career. After I graduated college, I worked as a licensed stock analyst where I focused on public gaming companies like Activision and EA. And then I worked at a startup called Super Data Research where I helped hedge funds figure out how to invest in those same gaming companies. Now, over the last year, we've seen two big trends among investors. And the first has to do with the stock market. Basically, we've seen a record number of retail investors buy stock for the first time. There were an estimated 10 million new brokerage accounts in 2020, which broke all previous records. And we started to see that influence with Wall Street bets and all of the meme stocks. The other trend has been in the crypto space. And I'm not referring to Ethereum and Bitcoin being up a lot this year. Yes, that's impressive, but it's not completely new, right? Cryptocurrencies always have their bull runs and bear runs. The big change has been the rise of NFTs and alongside social tokens and DAOs, these combine to make up what is called Web3, which in my opinion is going to be the first consumer applications for blockchains that will go mainstream. Okay, so based on the title of the video, you can probably guess which side I'm leaning on. So with all that said, let's get into the reasons why I'm making this shift. And by the way, this video is not about making recommendations. So do your research, not financial advice. I'm just laying out my own strategy on the table. So first, let's look at stock investing, which we can split into two buckets, right? First, you have active investing, which is a hands-on style where either you're picking stocks that you like or you hire someone else to do it for you. And then you have index investing, which is when you make a bet on a bigger group of stocks so that you diversify your investment a bit more and you don't have to worry too much about any individual business. This is sometimes also referred to as passive investing. So the first reason behind my shift that I want to mention might be the most controversial point that I make in this entire video. So let's just get it over with. Active stock market trading, if you're a regular small investor, is a rigged game. And I'm not the first to say, right? You might've heard that before that it's kind of impossible for the little guy to win, but you might not realize how true this statement really is. Like I said, I worked closely with hedge funds for many years and I've gotten a behind the scenes look at how they really work. And so first off, you have some of the sharpest people in the world, right? There's been a huge talent suck into financial institutions over the last couple of decades because of the amount of money that you can make there. So a hundred years ago, if you were an Einstein, there wasn't a clear way for you to become a millionaire based on those talents, right? probably just became a scientist or professor. But today that brain power can make you incredibly rich at the right hedge fund. And as a result, we've seen a lot of potential Einsteins join these funds and are using their skills to create trading algorithms that track a billion different signals and metrics. And it's just a level of sophisticated modeling that you and I don't get access to. Then you have the amount of money that they have to spend on resources, right? So they're able to throw hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars at any data provider without hesitating. And I know this because, you know, I used to sell them some of that data and they often pay experts to come into their office to help them better understand whatever market they're investing in. So again, information that you and I don't get. And then finally, beyond the money, they have access to the companies themselves. So they speak directly to the CEOs. They go to dinners with the executives behind closed doors. They get a level of detail that sometimes borders on insider information. And in some cases, it actually does cross over into insider info. So coming from someone who got to know the players in this world, I can personally say that I would never do any active trading myself. Or if I did, I would look at it more like gambling than investing. The idea of me reading articles on Google and creating a financial Excel model in my spare time and Thinking that I have an edge is silly. Now, does that mean you can never pick a good stock on your own? Of course not. But it's incredibly hard to find any amateur investor that has a consistent track record over a long period of time playing against the big boys. Of course, here on YouTube, you're not going to hear much of that, right? Because it's a big business. If we all agreed that active trading was a loser's game, then how many channels would run out of content overnight? You know, so they're not incentivized to say, all right, pack it up, boys, save your money, invest it elsewhere, because, you know, that's part of what creates their content. But anyways, that's a topic for another day. Now let's look at the NFT market in comparison. Today, there's little to no institutional investing in NFTs. These tokens are way too small and liquidity is very low, which actually is a negative for us smaller investors as well. But I'll touch on that in a minute. So it's a much more level playing field. You're competing against other smaller amateur investors. 
And this is a big point for me because, you know, I'm fine with losing money, but I hate losing money because the chips were stacked up against me in unfair ways that I didn't even realize. Now, if you were paying attention, then you remember that there's still another part to the stock market, which was index stock investing. And for those that don't know what an index is, it's basically a fund that you know allows you to invest in a basket of stocks. And the most diversified one for the US stock market is called VT Sachs by Vanguard, which basically just owns a little piece of every company in the stock market. And they say this is a good way of betting on the general economy. And for a while, I believe that too. And I always would recommend VT Sachs for people who would ask me, how to get started with stocks. But now as you'll see, I think that's actually wrong. Because if you ask me what's gonna be the biggest growth driver for the global economy over the next 10 years, I would put my money on the crypto space. And I might be biased, but once you start learning about the potential of DeFi and NFTs and the utility that all these different chains are working on, then it's hard to see another sector with this much potential and energy right now. And as of right now, index funds in the US have very little exposure to any of that. Like yes, VT Sachs does track a bit of every public company, but really the only major business that's deeply connected to the crypto space is Coinbase. And they're not gonna be capturing a lot of the value that's happening with NFTs or DeFi, for example. Even worse than that, there's a good chance that the success of crypto comes at the expense of many public companies. The smart ones will figure out how to cooperate and include these new technologies, but many companies are gonna ignore it or will outright fight it, and I think as a result, we're gonna be seeing a lot more blockbusters in the coming decades. Some examples of competitors are BigCloud, which is competing with Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, Uniswap and other decentralized exchanges, and they're competing with Coinbase, for example, and then Axie Infinity and other NFT games competing with Activision and Roblox. And I know these are tiny projects right now, but I don't doubt that some will become multi-billion dollar businesses. And typically one company losing out to another isn't a big deal if you're investing in the total stock market index, because the value stays in the system, right? It just transfers from one business to another. But in this case, the value actually leaves the system if these crypto businesses take off. And it goes even further than that because now it's looking likely that many of the big businesses that will come out of crypto in the coming years will be structured as DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations, which if they're fully decentralized, they're probably not gonna be considered as securities. And as a result, they probably won't even be listed as public companies on the stock market. For example, Uniswap in April had $36 billion in volume compared with $110 billion at Coinbase. And Coinbase as a public company has a market cap of 50 billion. So with Uniswap, you're gonna get a unicorn that could eventually be worth 50 billion or 100 billion, but which will never be listed on the stock exchange. This isn't talked about enough, I think, because for the first time ever, we have a huge growth sector that by definition probably won't be available as stocks. All right, the next point is about passive income streams. Now, in the stock market, you can only make passive income through dividends, right? And the way it works is you typically have to choose between growth stocks or dividend stocks because you'll almost never find a fast growing stock that also gives off dividends because they're always reinvesting any extra money back into the business. On the other hand, with NFTs, you can have an asset with a lot of growth potential that also gives you dividends. And I just came out with an entire video outlining every way that you can make extra money with your NFT. You can check it here. But let me give you an example that I think will be huge. Say you find an avatar collection that you really like and one that you think has a lot of growth potential, but you're worried about putting down a lot of money for it. Well, one thing you'll be able to do is fractionalize that NFT into 100 pieces then you keep 51 and sell 49. And then what you do is set up secondary royalties on those 49 pieces so that every time someone trades one of those, you get a five or 10% fee. I can also see a platform in the near future that allows you to buy those fractions of an NFT, but then the actual NFT, which is in the platform's custody, can still be rented out to anyone that wants to use it. And then the revenue from renting it out is passed on to the owners as well. So you can see how you can start stacking different passive income streams on top of each other, and that takes away a lot of the risk. But at the same time, the actual NFT could still be something that has a lot of growth potential. So you get the best of both worlds, and that just doesn't exist with stocks. Okay, and finally, a third reason why NFTs and social tokens seem to me to be a better asset class than stocks is utility, which is becoming one of the most used words for me in 2021. You see, when you buy stocks in a company, it really doesn't have much impact on your life outside of being just numbers on a screen. You don't get to meet the CEO. You know, if you buy a Tesla stock, it doesn't mean you get to ride around in a Tesla. It's just very cold and transactional. And the value to you is limited to the amount of money that you can make or lose. And for many people, that's perfectly fine, right? You know, they live busy lives and they're just looking for a place to put their spare change. So I get that. 
But in comparison, NFTs and social tokens are not only providing a way for you to invest your money, but on the other side of the coin, they will also provide utility to you. Basically, real value that you will be able to take in whether the price of the asset goes up or not. And you can think of utility as a spectrum. So on the more basic side, you have maybe just the bragging rights of owning something and maybe aesthetic or sentimental value. By the way, these are enough to make art a $50 billion industry, so it's no small thing. Then after that, you get to true consumable experiences. So maybe you own an NFT weapon that makes it easier for you to win in a video game, or maybe it's an entry ticket that gets you access to concerts or conventions. And then after that, you get into the realm of pure income-based utility, which we touched on before, so you know dividends and things like that. And then for the majority of these tokens, you also get community value. You know, when you buy a share of Walmart, it's not because you're excited to join the private Walmart Discord and go to private Walmart shareholder lounges. Can't even imagine what that would look like. But with nearly every NFT, you have that community aspect as well. And it combines investment with lifestyle brands and hobbies. And that to me is worth a lot more than just the financial side of it. Okay, now let's talk about one negative aspect of moving into these Web3 investments from stocks. And that's the fact that these NFTs and social tokens are incredibly difficult to value. And that introduces a lot of risk. You see, with stocks, you're dealing with companies that produce cash flows. And that's primarily what you're valuing. The multiples in a stock price are just different prices that people are willing to pay for future cash flows that they're expecting from the business. There's a tried and tested science behind valuing some of these companies, and it gives investors a foundation to make bets off of. On the other hand, you have crypto and NFTs, which today, you know, most of them aren't producing cash flows. So the value to an NFT, like this LeBron moment from NBA Top Shot, which people pay $400,000 for, comes from scarcity and the perceptions from collectors. It's based on people believing that the thing has value, even though some people could argue that there's no actual intrinsic value. So from the investor perspective, you know, the only way you can figure out what the right price might be for an NFT that doesn't produce cash flows is by comparing it to other NFTs. So you might look at the rarity, the artwork, and then you make a subjective conclusion about its value. And this means you need to develop really specialized knowledge to get it right. And that's hard and there still isn't really a playbook for doing this consistently. However, this is changing because as I said before, we're about to be introduced to an entirely new wave of utility for NFTs and more cash flow opportunities. So over time, I expect that NFTs will be easier to value because they will start producing cash flows and then you can start using somewhat similar models that are being used in the stock market. The other issues with NFTs right now is the lack of liquidity. And remember, I mentioned this being a reason why institutional investors aren't going to jump in anytime soon and that's good for us, but it's also bad that we face low liquidity as well because we make mistakes all the time, right? We're gonna make bad investments and without liquidity, it might be difficult to get out of a bad position. And so when you pick a loser, it could end up hurting a lot more than in stocks because as the price goes down, you might not be able to find another buyer and you just keep losing money. But again, over time, I think this problem does go away due to fractionalization and just as more investors slowly come into the space and create a robust market. It probably won't ever be as liquid as the stock market, but it will improve a lot in the coming years compared to what we have today. All right, so there you have my plan and my reasons for doing so. And as I mentioned, I'm still keeping stocks in my IRA due to tax reasons and I'm a real estate investor as well. So I still view this as being a diversified portfolio. Now, are there risks to what I'm doing? Of course there are. And if you want to see an overview of some of those risks, check out this video here, which is all about what could go wrong. Maybe the biggest risk is that NFTs are mostly things that you buy with discretionary spending. And during an economic downturn, that's the first thing to go, right? And recently there's been more voices saying that there could be something serious right around the corner. And perhaps the most dramatic warnings came from Michael Burry, the guy who called the last recession and who was played by Christian Bale in The Big Short, and who recently came out and said that we were going to be facing the mother of all crashes. Maybe, maybe not, but I can't help but remember all the other really smart and well-credentialed people who have been saying basically every year for a decade now that the market's been in a bubble and yet it keeps improving. So the truth is that it's probably too complex to worry about. And if you have investments that you have high conviction in, you should just follow your gut. Again, none of this is financial advice. I'm just laying out my thoughts on how I'm handling my own portfolio. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you again at the next video.